Thank you very much for being with us. Uh, please tell me your name and your affiliation. I am Joris Delanou and I am the co-founder and uh, COO of Fairmint Incorporation. And what does Fairmint do? Well, Fairmint is basically um, uh, the platform that enables company to run continuous securities offering. And uh, the continuous securities offering is a novel way for companies to get financing. Uh, and uh, it's also an opportunity for any stakeholders uh, to get the uh, stake in uh, all those company uh, when the cap capital is traditionally reserved uh, to um, insiders. So how did you arrive to this uh, together with your other co-founder? Well, the, the story of Fairmint is really the story of two uh, previous uh, entrepreneurs that uh, already uh, um, experiment the highs and lows of uh, building a company, scaling it. Uh, we both have different paths. Uh, one, uh, Thibaut, my co-founder, uh, used the VC money to make his previous business that is sold in uh, 2014. Um, I used the debt uh, to finance both my previous business uh, in consulting. And uh, the point is that at one, at one moment we were like trying to find a way for making life for a founder easier and trying to fix the, 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 the issue with the financing. And um, it all started with the bonding curve mechanism uh, from Simon de la Rouvière. Um, that was like, like something super interesting, but still we had to dig and find a way how to use it. And, uh, and right after that, the, the, the way it started with a white paper uh, super mathematical uh, focus, uh, trying to give uh, an overview of what would be a company in 2050. Uh, that was that was the the goal of the continuous organization white paper, um, and since then we've been working hard on uh, trying to uh, make a bridge between what would be the future and what we are uh, now and what we have now and what can be done so that we can uh, uh, fix this gap. So if a startup comes to your website uh, uh, that uh, launched uh, very recently in a private beta, mm -hmm. but let's assume that is already available on the market, what can they do? Well, the way, the way it works, the platform, basically we provide the entire tech to companies uh, and with a simple widget a button on their website, uh, to be more precise, an invest now button, uh, they will have the opportunity to create a stakeholder backend dedicated to their business. And through this stakeholder backend, they will have the opportunity to communicate with their stakeholder with a different message than when they are simply customers or users. It's not a commercial website, it will become a real product for the company to use and uh, to raise or get financing through this product. And How is it different from uh, traditional equity crowdfunding? Well, the, 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 thing is, the, the way it works is basically the company will build over time a collateral. This collateral becomes the floor price of any um, um, uh, securities that will be issued by the company. And this collateral is a fixed percentage of uh, the future revenue of the company. And the way the, mechan the mechanism will work is simply uh, the, the, the investor, the stakeholder, when they want to invest, they will speculate on what will be the future revenue of the company. And um, basically, that means that for an investor, we provide them with a new protocol of investment that protect them because at any time they can monitor if the company is executing correctly, uh, do they match what their uh, projection were, and as an investor, you can invest anytime. So that means that uh, comparing to um, the equity fundraising today, where you have to put the money at the beginning based on projection that maybe will never happen, you will be able to decide and say every month, I will put a bit of my money in this company and I will see if the funders and the C-level team and everyone in this company are delivering uh, what uh, they uh, mentioned when they wanted to get this financing. And, and so you described a buyback reserve. 
Uh, and that is available for the investors uh, to get liquid, is that correct? Well, the, the buyback reserve is, as I mentioned, the floor price. And being the floor price, that means that at any time, the company uh, will buy back the securities if someone wants to leave the table. And uh, maybe it won't be the best price, but what's for sure is that the uh, at any time, an investor will be able to leave the table. And that's the liquidity that so many investors are looking for. Yes. Uh, you describe uh, uh, the, the process as issuance of uh, securities. Yes. Uh, so uh, um, how are you working with the US uh, regulators in order to make sure that uh, this is compliant for US startups and US uh, investors? Well, maybe to answer this question, I, I will try to think wider and, and re-explain how the entire platform is built. Um, so I mentioned at the beginning of this interview that uh, the, the, uh, the white paper uh, of continuous organization is the base of what we did. Right after that, we, we developed the smart contracts that fit with all the math. And that are the two uh, pieces of, the, of the, the entire stack that are free for the community. But obviously, when, when we want to issue securities, we need uh, more um, um, values than just the, the, these two pieces of the stack. And we started to work with uh, two law firms in the States uh, to really build a complete legal framework. And this legal framework embed all that you need as a company to run a continuous securities offering um, uh, being 100% compliant. And on top of that, we started to work also with one of the big four uh, to be sure that we can provide the tax framework. Um, and the tax plus legal framework are like the best way today to, to, to uh, uh, be compliant because that means that from the beginning of the usage of the platform until the moment that uh, someone invests and hold the security, we will do all the steps that require the, the regulation. And uh, is the platform for any startup? If I come up with an idea tomorrow and I decide to incorporate, can I start using it right away, even if I have uh, achieved no milestones in my roadmap? Well, that's a super interesting question because the model by itself uh, should be like, we know Stripe Atlas. Well, the CSO should be an option in Stripe Atlas. We should be able to start a company and immediately run the continuous securities offering. But to do that, we need uh, to uh, evangelize uh, this new way of uh, going public for our business. And uh, right now, the best way to prove the model is to focus on companies that are uh, probably seed, series A, series B company, generating revenue, getting already some traction, a community built, and all those people, all those stakeholders, plus the figures will be the best way to uh, show that the model works. But what's for sure is that as soon as uh, we will see this product market fit and distraction uh, on the model, well, that would be really natural to see a company that start and from day one that run a CSO. Um, the continuous organization expression refers to the fact that this kind of uh, fundraising mechanism is itself continuous, mm -hmm. right? So it doesn't require the kind of concentrated investment and effort by the startup that today's uh, fundraising uh, requires. Um, what are the parameters that uh, are incorporated in the model and the smart contract? Well, th there are several and uh, each CSO deserve a, a minimum of work before to be uh, launched. Uh, first of all, the first step that will matter will be the commitment. So if you are a company and you want to run a CSO, you have to Can disclose. you maybe uh, define the acronym CSO? Oh yeah, Continuous Securities Offering. Uh, so as soon as you, you want to run a Continuous Securities Offering, you have to be sure that you will be crystal clear on your uh, revenue commitment. Whether you are doing a revenue today or tomorrow, well, the period of time for uh, securities offering like we are doing, uh, due to the fact, the fact that it's continuous, is at least three years. And that means that in the next three years, if you do 
just one dollar of revenue, we have to know exactly as an investor what would be the percentage of this one dollar that will be uh, uh, funeral to the to the collateral, and so that's the first step. The second step that is really important when when we work on the on on the on the on launching a continuous security offering is also w what is your market, because depending on your company and your industry, it's really different. The the percentage uh, has to be uh, uh, linked to the industry. Uh, in some super high margin and high gross businesses like software as a services, uh, well, it's obvious that the the revenue commitment can be super high. But in markets where growth can be high but the margin are super low, that can be risky to have a high uh, uh, revenue commitment uh, compared to SaaS. So we have to adjust that. And the way we, we, we start the continuous securities offering with uh, uh, two to three months of analysis of what are the projections of the company, uh, what kind of business model it is, what type of industry it is, um, is it um, uh, capital intensive? intensive? Uh, does it require uh, more capital than the other? Uh, is it depending on workforce uh, uh, more than on scalable software? Um, all those details have to be really analyzed and we put all that with some projection uh, from the CFO uh, to make the complete mathematical and economical uh, simulation. And we do that using uh, CAD-CAD. Uh, it's an engine developed by a company called Block Science. And Block Science is run by uh, Michael Zargam and his team. And we've been working with them on building this uh, economical framework as well. And that's how you start a uh, continuous security offering. Uh, what stakeholders gain benefit from participating in a, a, a CSO beyond the founders and uh, the traditional investors? Well, I like to represent the CSO as the new table beside the cap table. We call it the fair table. And um, it's really important to understand that today, when I mentioned that uh, most of the, um, the equity mechanism I are reserved to insiders. Uh, we see that one year ago, the SEC uh, received letters from Airbnb, uh, letter from uh, Uber, requesting for a way to incentivize their drivers, their host, uh, because they generated the value, and it has been hundred percent concentrated on VCs and funders, and a bit on employees. But all those people that generated the value were completely excluded, excluded of uh, uh, the, the upside. And imagine that Uber in 2010 would have run a continuous security offering. Probably today you would see drivers that would be millionaires just because at the beginning they would have received some, uh, some fare uh, from Uber uh, and these securities would worth a lot today. Uh, so that's what we want to build and that's what we want to do. And stakeholders today are, are really like they understood that they are uh, an important part of the companies and i don't know if it's the access to uh, information internet or whatever but the fact that they know that they can access to that because decentralized finance makes it simple uh well they they are really waiting for that today and uh it's really funny i have an anecdote because we've been interviewing so many funders, investors and stakeholders. Uh, each time we were taking a, a, a ride with Uber and Lyft driver, uh, we were questioning them. Hey, wh what do you think about the share that they are giving you running their IPO? And they were super disappointed. They felt that they were screwed. They felt that the entire upside was already gone. And they really expect a new way today. If a new company tomorrow starts and, and with the, let's say the same tech uh, as Uber propose a CSO from day one, I'm pretty sure that many of them will switch. And uh, uh, we, we noticed that 10 years ago, we were doing a video conference with Skype. Today we do it with Zoom. So we are in a world where it can go super fast. We don't know what will happen. What we saw over the last 10 years is that the value were generated by uh, communities, 
by uh, all the stakeholders. And I have the feeling that since several years, there is a momentum that started. And it's, it's really now that we feel that they are expecting for something and they are uh, taking uh, all the, 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 the decision to make it happen. So uh, a CSO is not an ICO, it is not an STO, it is not uh, an IEO, uh, but uh, it is still a platform that is compatible with the existing uh, blockchain-based ecosystem of solutions. Absolutely. Uh, the tokens that are issued are ERC-20, uh, they can be held in a normal wallet, Absolutely. and they can be traded on exchanges that will potentially list them. Absolutely. Uh, so, uh, what are the advantages of being uh, uh, compliant with all kinds of emerging standards that have been already widely adopted? Well, basically, being uh, working on standards means that we can also um, uh, um, increase or, or um, simply improve our product every day. So that is really important because we want to follow the movement and we want to improve our product uh, beside the standards. And uh, the fact that we rely on uh, Ethereum, but we are not blockchain agnostic, means that at any time tomorrow, you can see uh, Fairmint with a smart contract on Tezos, uh, and maybe on, on any other big blockchain that can happen tomorrow, like Libra, if, if any time it, uh, it happens. Um, but the fact that uh, uh, we wanted to build uh, on top of those kind of standard was also because we know that these standards are working on uh, being compliant. And uh, the, 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 the fact that we want to run a uh, continuous security offering uh, being 100% compliant is also uh, a proof that we want to show to the regulator that, hey, we are not scamming. We are preparing something that is strong. Um, I think the ICO were actually one of the best way to show that people want to uh, get a new way of financing. Uh, stakeholders want to be part of this new way of financing. Simply, the way it was working was too funder friendly and it ended scamming some people. Uh, you are also giving back to the community because uh, in your stack uh, you have uh, important open source components. Yes, uh, the, the white paper of uh, continuous organization was the first uh, point uh, of, uh, and the first start of our job. Um, uh, the, the smart contract has been 100% developed and audited by uh, consensus diligence and this is, this is available for everyone. Uh, that means that you can go on our GitHub and you can uh, check our repository and you can get all the code and, and you can run your own uh, smart contract on your side. Um, and it was really important because we, are, we know that uh, it's because as soon as we are we have like 100 brains working on the same project. We have a chance to make some big improvement. And uh, it was really, yeah, it was something very important for us uh, to be uh, to be open source on this part, yeah. So uh, you and Thibault have been working on this uh, for a long time. Here we are now that uh, you are launching. Um, and uh, what will be the first uh, CSO that will go live on the platform? Well, we will eat our own dog food. <laughs> so that means that Fairmint will be the first company uh, running the CSO. Uh, we know that we have uh, LOI signed with our first customer, but we also wanted to show that we believe in what we are doing. And the best way for that was to do it for ourselves. And eating our own dog food is also the best way for startup to show that they are skin in the game. And uh, the way we run the, our own CSO uh, we, sh we will, s we will uh, reproduce the cap table uh, with our investor. Uh, so that means that um, uh, everyone, including the funders, uh, will put on the table and will make it happen and make it work. Um, and it's also a great opportunity because talking about this community that has been super supportive uh, since one year, um, we want them to get the opportunity to get an upside on Fairmint as well. And it was super important for us to be the first because we wanted to give them this uh, opportunity to be the first as well. And uh, some of them will probably invest $100, $1,000, maybe more, but at least they will be 
uh, from day one, uh, the person that uh, get the opportunity to invest in the in the CSO of Fermint. So congratulations again and good luck with the, the first uh, CSO on your platform and of course to be followed with many others. Thank you very much, David. Thank you.